This is differentiation revision for higher maths uh, prelim or for your final exam. Uh, the question here we're looking at is at uh, stationary points and we're going to be determining their nature based on the, the curve that's here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll run through a standard process that we'll do for, for any curve that we have and uh, we'll get to the end where we'll draw a nature table and we'll find out the, uh, the shape of the curve and make some conclusion from there. Right, let's get started. So, find the stationary points on the curve. So, first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have to differentiate this curve. But before I do that, I'm going to have to prepare it for differentiation. So, let's start with the curve. y is equal to x squared, and we've got 12 minus 4x, and we've got minus 3x squared. Okay, so that's the curve that we've got here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out that bracket first by the x squared. And I've still got y is equal to, so that's going to be 12x squared minus 4x cubed. And that's going to be minus 3x to the power of 4. So that's the, the curve multiplied out. It's now in the state where I can differentiate it. So I'll go ahead and differentiate. dy by dx is going to be equal to, so it's going to be 24x. That's going to be minus 12x squared. And that's going to be minus 12x cubed. Okay, that's it differentiated. And remember that's your gradient formula there as well. And what we're going to say is we know that uh, dy by dx equals 0 at stationary points or the gradient is equal to 0 at stationary points. So for stationary points, I'll just say the dy by dx is equal to 0. And what I'll do is I'll substitute it into the left hand side of the equation. And just in this part here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a common factor between all of these. And I'm going to take out a factor of 12x out here, outside the bracket. And what I've got left here will be 2. And here, what I'll get is, I'll just be left with x. And the common factor coming out of there of 12x will leave me with x squared. And I've got a minus in between there. Right, so what I need to do now is I'm trying to find solutions for x, so I'm going to have to factorise this part here. So I've got 12x, I'm going to put this into two brackets, and I've got 2 and I've got 1 there, and what I'll have is x and x to multiply these, and what I know is that 1's a negative, 1's a positive, based on this here, and the biggest one that multiplies out is negative, so it must be the 2 times the x there, that's the biggest one. There we go, and that's it factorised. So from what I can see here is, I have 12x equals 0. So there's my first solution, so x is equal to 0, or my first stationary point x value. From here, I've got 2 plus x equals 0, so x is equal to minus 2. And for here, I've got 1 minus x equals 0, so x is going to be equal to 1. If I take the x over there, x is equal to 1. So there's my, my coordinates I'm going to work with. Right, because I need the stationary points, I need to find the uh, the y values as well for it. So what we'll go for, first of all, I'll go for x is equal to 0. For x equals 0, what we've got is we've got y. I'm going to substitute a 0 in. I'm going to substitute it into the equation up at the top here. So I'll just put it into this one here. So what I've got is I've got 0 squared. And that's going to be multiplied by 12, minus 4 times 0, uh, minus 3 times 0 squared. And that will work out to be 0. Okay, so that gives me the point 0 for x and 0 for y. So there's my first stationary point there. I'll now go ahead and just do it for uh, x is equal to minus 2. So I'm going to substitute minus 2 into where x is. So let's work that one out. So we've got minus 2 here, I'm going to square that, I think got 12 minus 4 times minus 2, minus 3 times minus 2 squared, close the bracket, and we'll work out what this one's equal to. Right then, let's go ahead and do that. What we've got, we've got uh, 4 there, okay, so that's going to be 4, um, and we're going to multiply that by, so that's going to be 12, and that's going to be adding 8 to that, that's going to be 20, that's going to be 4, that's going to be 12, so that should give me an answer of 8. 
So 8 within this bracket here, I'm going to times it by 4, so that's going to give me an answer of 32. So the coordinate that I've got here is minus 2, 32. So there's two coordinates I've got. Final one, I'm going to go for x is equal to 1. So for x equals 1, I'm going to substitute the 1 in. So I've got 1 squared, and that's going to be 12 minus 4 times 1, minus 3 times 1 squared. Right, and let's work this one out as well. So it's 1 times whatever's in this bracket. So I've got 12, and it's going to be minus 4 is going to take me to 8. 8 minus 3 is going to give me 5. My final coordinate, 1 for x and 5 for y. Right, so that's me got the three uh, stationary points with the x and y values. What we'll do now is I'll look at a nature table to try to work out the shape of the graph. Okay, and that will tell me what's a maximum and what's a minimum. Right, there we go. So, let's draw across to here. I'll get my x values along here. So, I need to put them down in order. So, the first one that's going to go along is going to be minus 2. And remember, it's the x values that we put in here. So, minus 2 will go there. So I want to know what the curve's like as it approaches minus 2. I want to know what it's like when it leaves minus 2 and then goes to 0. So there's the 0 there. Then I want to know what it's like between 0 and 1. And then I want to know what it's like when it disappears after 1. And to see what that's like there. Right, so the values that I'm going to choose in between each of these, I'll go for minus 3 here. In between minus 2 and 0, go for minus 1. Between 0 and 1, I'll just go for a half. And after 1, I'll use the value for x, it'll be 2. And what I'm going to work out on this side here is dy by dx. Okay, because it's the gradient that I'm really interested in. And let's see, why don't I use... I can use either that equation there, I can use this equation here, or I can use that one. I'm going to use this one here, that's the one that I'm going to use. So the one I'm going to use will be, so it'll be 12x, and we've got 2 plus x, and I've got 1 minus x. And all I'm going to do is just try to substitute these numbers in to find out where the, the values are going to be positive or negative. I already know that for minus 2, okay, I know that it's 0, because I, I worked out minus 2 by saying that the gradient's equal to 0. So this here, dy by dx is equal to 0 here equals 0 there, and equals 0 there. And I'm after the, the bits in between to tell me what the shape is. Right then, let's uh, substitute minus 3 into here, right? So, and I'm just interested whether it's negative or it's positive. So, minus 3 going into there will give me minus 36, isn't it? So that'll be a minus, and what we're doing is a minus times, if I put minus 3 in there, that'll be a minus, and that there, minus 3 going in there, makes that a positive, because uh, 1 minus minus 3 is a positive. So that gives me a positive answer. Okay, So I can work out the values, but, but really I'm just looking whether it's positive or it's negative. Minus 1. So I put a negative 1 in there, so that's going to give me minus 12. So that's going to be a minus. Multiply that by minus 1 going in there will give me a positive. And minus 1 get in there will be 1 minus minus 1, which will be 1 plus 1 will be 2, so that will be times another positive. So I've got 1 negative there, so this one here is going to be negative. For a half going in, so that's going to give me 6, so that's going to be a positive. This part here, what I'll do is I'm going to multiply, wait a minute, 6, half, half going in there, that will give me 2 and a half, so that's a positive. A half can in there makes that positive as well, which gives me positive times positive times positive, gives me positive. And finally, I've got a 2 that's going to go into this here as well. So 2 going in here would give me a positive. 2 in there, let's see, that'll give me 4, so that's another positive. And 2 going in there, so that'll be 1 minus 2 will give me a negative. So that gives me a negative. Right, so that lets me know what the shape of the graph is going to be. Let's try this along here. Right then. So the shape of the graph is going to be positive, so it's sloping up the way here. When it hits minus 2, it's flat. It's then going back down negative again to there. 
it's going to be flat again, it's going to be positive, it's going to be flat, and then it's negative there. So what I have here is a maximum turning point, and that's at the coordinates, minus 2, and I'll just check up here, it's 32. This here is a minimum turning at the bottom, so that's a minimum turning point at, and that's going to be 0, so 0 matches up with 0, so that'll be 0, 0. And another maximum turning point here at the coordinates, and it's going to be 1, so it's 1 and 5. So 1, 5. So that's me got the shape of the graph. I know what's a maximum, what's a minimum. I'll just make a finishing statement to, to try and conclude that. Okay. So the curve... And I'll just write down the curve that I was given. So it's x squared, 12 minus 4x minus 3x squared. I'm going to say that uh, has, has a, and let's go for maximum. <laughs> Dear me. Turning point. At, and let's put the coordinates for the maximum. So that would be minus 2, 32, and 1, 5. They are the maximum turning points. And a minimum turning point at, and I'll just state the coordinates for the minimum, at 0, 0. Okay, and that would be the question complete. Okay, so if you look back at what we've got there, what we're doing is to find the stationary points on the curve. We're going to prepare the curve, whatever way we get it, prepare it, differentiate it. That allows us to have a gradient formula. We're going to set that gradient equal to zero because anywhere that we see a turning point or a stationary point, we know that the gradient's flat or it's zero. Substitute that in, factorise out, get your x and your x values. Substitute your x values into the y equals equation. Gives you your uh, y coordinates. So that gives you your coordinates in total. Nature table. Determine what the slope of the graph's like, whether it's positive or negative. Draw the shape of the graph and write your concluding statement. And that's that question complete. Okay, so I've only got one more to do and that will be sketching curves. So it will be similar to what we're doing here with uh, question 7, but at the end what we're going to do is finalise by uh, sketching a curve. Good luck.